Yo, it's your boy DC Tree, and this is DC Tree Dance Nation, the channel on YouTube that covers hoops and heroes. And today we're talking hoops, we're talking about San Antonio Spurs, y'all. And the season has been over about a week or two now, and I've had to make this video what grade to give the Spurs. And I gotta tell you, it is a thought provoking question. <laughs> Because you gotta ponder, man. Did they have a good season? Did they have a bad season? Did they have an okay season? Was the season terrible? And I know about half the fandom. If you ask them if we had a good season, they're gonna say. The answer is no, 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 no. And I respect that, you know, because everyone has a chance to share their opinion. Everyone has an opinion, but you're wrong. Say what? Yes, you're wrong. You're wrong. Just sit back, relax, grab your beverage, and I'll tell you why you're wrong if you think the Spurs had a poor season. But before I jump too deep into it, if you like my content, please sub to the channel, hit that like button, and don't forget to hit that bell for more videos. Thank you so much for the continued support. Okay, to start off this video, I just want to say I'm not approaching this like a homer or someone that just feels like the Spurs can do no wrong if you're new to the channel. If you're old to the channel, you know I try to keep it real with you guys. You know, I'm not perfect, but I try to keep it real. So this isn't a video where I feel like the Spurs had an amazing season, man. I feel more like an old lady in the mob. Not bad, not bad. When it comes to the Spurs season, because I feel like I was one of the few that went into this season with realistic expectations. Playoffs were off the table, you know, blowing people out was off the table, you know, spectacular plays and games were off the table, national televised games were off the table because I knew this was a rebuilding year. Even Popovich for once admitted that this was a rebuilding year. So I went into it with the hope that our young players got better. And no one can deny that our young players indeed did get better. Obviously, Murray took that leap to all-star status. Amazing stat line, 21, 9, and 8. Leader in steals. He's definitely a shoo-in for a defensive team this year. He's still in the running as of this video for most improved player. You know, this is beyond what I imagined for him, you know for this season i figured he'd be closer to 17 7 and 7. he did an amazing job still has things to learn still has to work on the turnovers still has to show up in big games but hey he's getting there and then kelvin johnson man shout out to kelvin johnson for taking the leap showing that he is more than just a player with a big body that can play bully ball because that's what he was doing last season just willing his way to the basket willing his way to score in the second half of the year people figured him out this year he added the three-point shot to his game even when a stretch leading the league in three-point percentage man that is huge y'all that is huge for a player like kelvin johnson that relatively did not have an outside shot when he came into the league so kudos to him Another aspect or expectation I had for this season was for the Spurs to filter out their roster. We had so many guards and we still got a lot of guards, but not as many as before. Who are we going to keep? Who are we going to let walk? Lonnie Walker established himself as someone we probably need to keep. Now, he still may not make the cut. <laughs> you know, someone may overpay him and we may let him walk. But he, he's in the conversation because at the beginning of the season, I figured that it was a shoe in that he wasn't going to make it. And the reason why we were able to do that is because we actually made some concrete moves. I felt like the Derek White move was huge, not because I hate Derek White or because he's just not a great player, but I didn't think he was the focal point of offense. You get what I'm saying? And he was the highest play, paid player on the squad, but he wasn't putting up highest numbers. Nowhere near it. So I'm glad to see that his contract was relieved. I'm glad to see that he's doing well in Boston. But that move right there opened up the door for Primo, opened up the door for Lonnie. Of course, with the Forrest move as well, that helped as well. So the Spurs finally got some direction, got, you know, you know, putting their eggs in a basket finally, because for the longest, it seemed like they were guessing and hoping and hoping and guessing, you know, between Murray and White and you know, one night he handled the ball, Murray handled the ball, and the next night White handled the ball. They were all over the place. So I was glad they made a definitive decision 
finally so to me that's a victory man you know young players getting better um the spurs is choosing some direction us having great first round pick potential right now number nine pick number 20 pick number 25th pick you know another pick in the second round you know second round pick for the san antonio spurs is a pick to be reckoned with all in all man we have to look at victories just like we look at victories in the real world so for instance just to give an example if someone who dropped out of high school someone who went to job to job for a few years someone who you know wasn't great academically if they go back to school at 25 and get their ged that's a big deal because within their circumstances that's a victory and we got to look at it like that. You get what I'm saying? You know, maybe someone who was an honor student or a valedictorian, if they didn't go to college or they didn't, you know, get their degree, then that will be looked upon as a failure. But the San Antonio Spurs in our realm, in our niche, we had a good season, man. We got better. You know, our young people got better. They experienced some disappointment, some hurt to progress them to get better. You know, and within our own realm, within the Spurs Nation, we succeeded. We did well. We didn't do good by Warrior standards. We didn't do good by the Denver Nuggets standards. But by the San Antonio Spurs standards, we did well. And because of that, I'm going to give us a B- minus for the season. And let me clarify something. When I say standards, I'm not talking about the big three standards, the Tim Duncan, Mono Ginobili, Tony Parker standard. I'm talking about us being a team in the Western Conference with no superstar, with no franchise player, lacking direction. When you take that into account, I think we had a damn good season. That's why I'm giving them the B minus. So before you jump on me in the comments, I want to clarify that because once you really think about it, you know, the Josh Richardson pickup, you know, Primo starting, you know, getting better, you know, Murray's continuing to get better. Keldon continuing to get better. Having three first round picks, one of the picks probably as of this video being as high as ninth in a draft that could really help us up front. When you take all those things into account, man, I think we're in a solid position to make some noise next season. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Let me know in the comment section what your grade for the Spurs 2021-22 season is, man. And I feel like, you know, you should be at least in the C range. You know, I think my B minus was a little, you know, a little, uh, you know, helpful, you know, a little lenient. But I did that because of my perspective going into the season. No playoffs, you know, no accolades, just growth. And I like where we're going growth wise. All right, guys, thanks for kicking it with me. Check out the other videos on the channel and I will catch you in the next one. Hey.